welcome to class with biology children today we are going to discuss next topic interdependence between the biotic components in our previous class in the part 1 of chapter 7 we discussed about biotic and abiotic components what are biotic components the components which have life they are called a biotic components example plants animals virus fungi bacteria these all are biotic components but uh, abiotic components we need to discuss what do you know about abiotic components abiotic components means salt water sand bricks stone these all are considered as abiotic components abiotic components means non living components if you observe an ecosystem it always correlate with the biotic and abiotic components all of you observe this food web in this food web we can see producers as plants plants are going to eaten by rabbit rabbit is a consumer which consumer primary consumer here producers are plants next producers are going to eaten by rabbit so rabbit is considered as primary consumer rabbit is going to eaten by wolf next snake hawk tiger and bear etc okay next deer is also takes grass deer is also eaten by going to eaten by tiger and some carnivorous animals okay so by observing this food web what we are going to understand producers are useful to produce or prepare food materials these food materials are directly going to taken by primary consumers primary consumers are going to eaten by secondary and tertiary consumers so what it indicates it indicates that the every living organisms in an ecosystem depends on another living organism okay let us see some important points about this uh, topic we know that there is a feeding relationship between plants and animals along with this we can see an interdependence between plants and animals or for space reproduction shelter etc as well okay so if you observe any ecosystem that ecosystem always contains plants and animals in it okay these plants and animals are always uh, interdependent interdependent on one another okay for space for occupying space and also for reproduction for shelter okay so from where does plant get their food materials from where does plants get their food materials by using sunlight they prepare food materials by the process of photosynthesis and also they will get nutrients from the soil what other things do animals need for their survival so animals uh, they didn't contains chloroplast in them so they do not perform photosynthesis so they will get uh, food materials from other plants okay so see some important points uh, we found that we find that uh, not only the biotic components show interdependence among themselves but uh, biotic and the abiotic components like air water soil etc are also interdependent so what we have observed uh, plants and animals both they depend on each other for space reproduction and also for the shelter but in this uh, paragraph he is saying about not only biotic components abiotic components are also depends on one another okay here the sun is uh, the main source of energy for all the living things plants traps this energy through the photosynthesis what in about sun sun is the main source of energy so in order to prepare food materials by the plants sun light is necessary so by using sunlight plants prepares food materials these food materials are going to eaten by remaining animals okay by the process of photosynthesis plants prepares food materials animals do not get energy directly from the sun why what the reason we do not get the energy directly from the sun why because of no chloroplast in our body many animals eat plants which use sunlight to make the food materials animals that do not eat plants still depend on the energy for sunlight as they eat other plants eat us okay so here in this sentence we are going to observe the plants are always going to eaten by the animals 
the animals uh, which do not eat the plants uh, still they will get the energy from the sunlight let us discuss about the food chain a food chain has uh, three levels in it several plants uh, like algae etc uses sunlight to make their food uh, and are called producers what in about producers producers are useful to prepare food materials so generally we can consider plants as producers in our surroundings so not only plants acts as like a producers algae blue green algae is also acts as like a producer okay so consumers eat other living things and get the energy from them and get their energy from them so here producers means plants and algae they prepare food materials so these plants and algae are always going to consume by the consumers so by consuming these plants and algae consumers will get the energy next the last level is made up of decomposers so here producers after consumers we can see consumers after what we are going to observe decomposers decomposers they feed on wastes and debris of plants and animals on their remains after they die so these decomposers always depends on the dead plants and animal bodies dead bodies of plants and animals next they return nutrients to the soil for plants to use the cycle begin again so they are also called recyclers so what they are going to do whenever they enter on the dead bodies of plants and animals simply they will decompose the nutrients presented in the dead animals these nutrients simply they will enter into the soil again that is why these decomposers are called recyclers what they call they call recyclers now come to the activity 2 in this activity 2 we can observe how the uh, living organisms uh, depends uh, one depends uh, one on another okay see so here in the step 1 we can see all our plants so plants are acts as like a producers in step 2 we can see all the animals so these all the animals are pro consumers okay step 1 all the animals all the living organisms are producers in step 2 we can see so many animals these all are considered as consumers what do you know about this animal this is lion lion is considered as a top carnivore flesh eating animal so it is considered as a top carnivore next uh, uh, all of you observe these questions which are the producers in the food web so he, in this food web uh, which are the producers plants or grass plants and or grass acts as like a producers which are consumers in the above food web so some consumers we can see in the above food web they are rabbit deer frog etc see deer rabbit rat grasshopper cat frog okay fox wolf sheep like uh, some consumers peacock owl pigeon crane fish like uh, some consumers we can see in the above food web next uh, where does the food web starts from so here the food web is started from producers onwards okay next name the organisms where the food web ends so here the food web ends with which organism line line is in the top carnivore place next what happens when plants and animals die in the food web what animal what happens if both the plants and animals die in a food web ecosystem will disappear okay changes in the ecosystem now we are going to discuss the next topic changes in the ecosystem see some important points some changes affect the organisms as animals eat plants for other animals they reduce the number of organisms in their habitat so if you observe any any ecosystem in that ecosystem one animal is going to eaten by other animals okay so if this eating process is uh, happens continuously then what will happen ecosystem will be disturbed let us see for example there are many insects in a bird's habitat in a bird habitat bird's habitat so many insects are there imagine like that 
when a bird eats insects it helps keep the number of insects from getting too large this helps keeps the birds habitat and the whole ecosystem healthy and stable so imagine in an ecosystem so many insects are there so uh, few birds only going to eat those insects then what will happen that ecosystem becomes healthy and stable but uh, when there are too many birds eating insects imagine so so many birds are there if they uh, if all those birds uh, eat uh, insects then what will happen they reduces the insects population quickly in case of time there will not be enough food for the birds so if they all birds uh, they are going to eat uh, insects then what will happen population of insects gradually decreases okay in this situation some birds leave the area or die and few younger birds will be born this brings the ecosystem back into the balance so because of the lack of food material some birds leaves that particular area or they may some birds may die next as a result of this new birds will be born as a result of this what will happen finally ecosystem become balance ecosystem can also change quickly powerful storms tsunamis etc can destroy ecosystem very quickly okay ecosystem can also get some changes during storms tsunamis uh, during natural disasters okay because of these all the natural disasters ecosystem can also get changes quickly humans are also instrumental in bringing about changes in a ecosystem human population is also going to change in an ecosystem because of uh, some harmful diseases like um, spanish flu and uh, corona diseases these both are using to decreases the population of humans next uh, the biosphere is the largest uh, ecosystem present on the earth what in about uh, largest ecosystem present on the earth the biosphere the biosphere is the largest ecosystem present on the earth if you observe an ecosystem the factors and their interaction between each other and with biotic components have resulted in formation of different types of ecosystems as explained below okay so if you observe you know any ecosystem there is a chance to see biotic and abiotic components both are interdependent on one another so here we are going to observe ecosystem and its types flow chart and classification of ecosystem we are going to observe see ecosystem is mainly divided into how many types two types natural ecosystem artificial ecosystem ecosystem is mainly divided into two types natural ecosystem artificial ecosystem let us see natural ecosystem is again divided into terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem artificial ecosystem is not under our syllabus so no need to discuss about it natural ecosystem is mainly divided into two types of terrestrial aquatic ecosystem terrestrial ecosystem is again divided into three types grassland ecosystem which contains grass in it forest ecosystem i think you know forest next to desert ecosystem so three types of terrestrial ecosystem we can see grassland forest desert ecosystem aquatic ecosystem is mainly divided into two types freshwater ecosystem marine water ecosystem freshwater ecosystem means it contains only fresh water in it marine water ecosystem means marine means salt water so salt water ecosystem so how many types of ecosystems are there initially ecosystem is classified into two types natural artificial natural again divided into two types terrestrial aquatic terrestrial again divided into three types grassland forest desert ecosystems aquatic ecosystem mainly divided into two types of fresh water ecosystem marine water ecosystem so aquatic ecosystem and its types uh, means uh, fresh water and marine water ecosystems we will discuss in class 9 uh, okay children today's class is completed tomorrow we are going to discuss mangrove ecosystem and what's remaining uh, topics we are going to discuss thank you children